Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. Hello and welcome to Focus on Health. I'm your host Peggy Mello. Today's guests are Tracy Pitcher and Krista Strunk with the Hope Club of Latham. Welcome to the show ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Uh, Tracy, why don't we start with you. What do you do for Hope Club of Latham? Um, well, I have the honor of going I'm involved with a wonderful team of people who put together programs and activities for okay. persons touched by cancer. And the programs and activities are appropriate for people as young as four or as old as however old they want to be. That's <laughs> right. Okay, great. And Krista, do you want to just tell your story of why you are here? Sure. Um, I just finished treatment for malignant melanoma. Okay. Um, in October of 2010, I found a lump under my arm that uh, turned out to be a tumor. Um, it was originally thought to be an infection, but after a series of tests, MRIs and ultrasounds and different doctors, it was a tumor. And I finished a 12-month treatment called interferon therapy, which is an immunotherapy, and it's pretty difficult. So I was searching for People like me, um, mm -hmm. people struggling, same struggles as I had, you know, uh, it's probably the most difficult thing I can imagine. It's very lonely, so I, I was just really longing to find others who were in my situation, and mm -hmm. that's when I found the Hope Club. And what are the side effects of the interferon? Oh, geez, it ranges from skin rashes to memory loss, hair loss, uh, depression, paranoia. Um, nausea. Um, there's just a very long list. But it's not one of the chemotherapy drugs. No, right? it's not a chemotherapy. It's a month of intravenous therapy, okay. and then it's 11 months of self injections, three treatments a week. So you have to inject yourself, um, or have somebody close to you inject you. But it's oh my it's gosh. different from chemo, but it's um, it's got its own issues and side effects. So you've had quite a journey. I have. But we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Uh, Tracy, can you just tell me, uh, what is the history of the Hope Club of Latham? Oh, yes. We're, we're about a year and a half old. And Hope Club uh, was a result of a merger between the American Cancer Society and the local Gilda's Club of the Capital Region chapter. Mm -hmm. So on September 1st of 2010, um, Hope Club was born out of that merger. And um, it's been a really exciting time for us. It's allowed us to serve people in a, in a much more deep and profound way. Mm -hmm. And it, was, it, it actually has worked out very well and allowing us to serve even more people in a way that is much more impactful. And it's not just for people that have just been diagnosed with cancer, it's also for people that have, are, have had cancer treatment who are in remission and also family members mm -hmm. of cancer survivors. The way we phrase it, it's a clubhouse for people touched by cancer and touched can be um, defined in a, n a number of ways. Right including coworkers. We have a number of coworkers who come as a result of, of one of their own in their, in their office being diagnosed. Mm -hmm. So if someone feels that they fit the profile of what you've mentioned, um, do, do they join the organization? Is that what they do? Yeah, membership is easy and it's free. It's at no cost to the individual. Um, okay. They call our office, set up a time that's a, a, a whatever time is um, appropriate for their schedule, and they meet with us we provide them a tour, tell them a little bit more about all the programs and activities that we offer, mm -hmm. and they're good to go from that point on. They can take advantage of any of the programs that we offer. And then they don't 
leave. Right? Right, yeah, yeah, right, but <laughs> then they, they can't get they they with you. Leave, yeah. We hope not, because actually, <laughs> because we are made up of a very diverse community, um, we benefit from this collective wisdom. Um, someone who's newly diagnosed can connect with someone who is one year, five year, ten years yeah, out, right. mm -hmm. and um, and people who who have similar experiences. It's a way for them to connect mm -hmm. and 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 not have to go searching for people. Right. And you know we've got every Everybody that's you know right there who's ready to lend assistance so it's it's a very supportive community and I think that just about everyone out there viewing this knows someone mm -hmm. who's been touched by cancer mm -hmm. and uh, I mean I think everyone when they hear that someone has just been diagnosed uh, I, I don't know if they really know what to do and and I think that when they hear that C word mm -hmm. that they just think you know, their next question is, oh, how old is he or how old is she? Because they just think the person is just going to die, you know. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, we're all going to die eventually, <laughs> but is, is it the cancer that's going to kill us or is it right. something else? And how, do, how does that caregiver go through that whole process and still have a job and still be able to deal with everything? Right. So that's kind of what we wanted to maybe touch on today. Um, starting with physical wellness tips uh, for the cancer survivor. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you start with that? Well, um, it's very, it's important that when um, a person who's been diagnosed uh, decides that they, they really want to take good care of themselves during their treatment process that they talk to their health care provider because we want to okay. make sure that, that what it is that they choose is not going to get in the way of their recovery. Right. So um, they talk to their doc, and we have a variety of programs that people can take advantage of, and it really depends on where the person in, is at at that time and how they feel at that time. Yeah. Um, you know, we, you can do something as, as strenuous as running at the Sakati Center as part of our Well On Your Way program, um, or do gentle yoga. Um, or if even that is too much for them, they can take advantage of Reiki and massage. Right. Yeah, I've done, um, I still take advantage of the yoga and mm -hmm. the Reiki and massage. It, a lot of people are, will be post-surgery. A lot of people will be mid-treatment. So it does depend physically on how they feel. But um, as long as the doctor says they can do, you know, whatever it is, their, their limita whatever their limitations are, just to listen to your body, mm -hmm. I think is one of the most important things um, I found the yoga not just to to get me out and doing something physically but then it turned into a a mental and emotional wellness program right. as well and um, that's very important <laughs> that and part. I think that anyone that's undergoing any any of those classes you know they, they do it at whatever level they're able to do it. Right. So fine. You can't do your downward dog. Okay, fine. Right, Just exactly. Try to stick yourself up a little bit. Right. Physical that's activity the best is you important can do. during treatment and, and doctors will say that, you know, exercise of course is always good for us, but it can um, give you benefits, you know, as as a cancer patient or survivor that um, you might not otherwise need or get from well, the physical. I think that the important part of this, one of the important parts, because there's many, is that you lose a sense of control once mm -hmm. you've been diagnosed. Right. Your body has let you down. Um, mm -hmm. You relinquish all control to your health care team, um, to the impact of the treatments. And for the physical activity, um, in the wellness piece, it's your opportunity to take control over what's going on for you. Right. Yeah. So um, we have one of our facilitators was told by their doctor, you know, um, don't be surprised if you feel so exhausted that you can barely walk to the mailbox. And this woman was a runner and she was devastated by that. Right. So mm -hmm. part of her mental um, wellness was she needed to prove that she could do something more than walk to her mailbox. So she was really became very much more active during her treatment process and she benefited immensely for it. And out of those activities that we offer, um, you might be doing this to help your body and help your mind, mm -hmm. but it's the social connection mm -hmm. that you make with the others who yeah. are there 
taking part in the program that really also brings that emotional wellness to you that you might not have otherwise. Right, right. And I think that Chris has already touched on it. I, I think that the, the physical activity is, is always going to have that endorphin release mm -hmm. and it's always going to affect mm -hmm. your mood, I think, in a, in a positive way. Um, so I can imagine, I actually can't imagine being diagnosed with cancer. I really can't imagine it. But um, what about emotional wellness tips? Well, there are so many things that you can do yeah, for yourself. Um, I guess the one tip is that don't be surprised if something you never thought of considering doing before brings some benefit Absolutely. to you. I would never shut the door on anything. Somebody who says um, that you should do that you should do journaling um, is something that many people don't really consider, but a lot of people mm -hmm. find great benefit doing journaling, doing the process. Because I know yeah. that that's something you've been yes, doing. Yes, that actually happened to me. I. Um, I was recommended a psychologist that works specifically with uh, cancer patients, okay. people in treatment, their family members, survivors, um, and he had suggested that to journal. And I, did, you know, for a long time I was just like, oh, you know, whatever. It didn't. It wasn't something for me. But then I, I got to a point where I needed to release my feelings, my thoughts, so I both journal and blog. Um, I have, uh, my journal is almost more like a diary. My blogging is really my innermost thoughts and fears and worries, and it helps me to, to get them out in that fashion because it's things that I don't want to say to people. Um, you know, a lot of my fears and worries, I, I don't want to say to anybody but I can, this is how I get it out of my system. And who has access to it? Everybody. Um, anybody that I shared my link with, um, uh, it's on caringbridge.org. Uh, so oh, okay. anybody that I give that information to can read it. Um, I don't Which hold back. Which is great. <laughs> that, that is fabulous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if it's like a Facebook environment, you right. know. No, it's just it's, a healthcare environment, actually. It's totally different than, mm -hmm. it is. oh boy, here this person's talking about what, I mean. It, yes, so I know. People you. only read it when they want to see an update. Yes, and um, I find that it, it's surprising to me who reads it and that people are interested, and that, that is helpful to me as well. Um, you know, I guess it's kind of a, well, it's not an online support group. There are those, but... When, I, when people read what I write and I get feedback on it, mm -hmm. it lets me know how much people actually care. And you know, when they ask me certain things that I know that I've written there, it's, it's just it's important to have my friends and family um, support me in that way. So are you finding with the blogging that you're getting people from all over? The world? Or? Um, nope, because it's just it's only people that I've shared my link okay. with, so it's not it's not open to the public. But I could, I mean, if I could, if I wanted to share it with anybody, um, it's yeah. Sorry, I'm drawing a blank here. I think you must go through like the ups and the downs, and so you're really sort of documenting well you know right today's today i'm hitting bottom yes <laughs> somebody yeah. help me you I've, know? I've had somebody some of those tell days. me something <laughs> um it's it's a place to really release there's another um type of a similar i guess a similar type of therapy where you it's called throwaway therapy where you would write down your worries or your your bad thoughts or your fears for that day mm -hmm. literally on a piece of paper you crumble it up and you throw it away and hopefully you don't throw it at someone no well, just if that helps right. it's only paper <laughs> <laughs> but to burn it it's it yeah it's similar it's similar for me it's i can write it on the screen and then i post it and then it's gone it's it's out of my head for as long you know until it comes back if it ever comes back those those thoughts and fears so it's helpful very helpful 
I can imagine uh, if somebody's going through a cancer journey, I mean, they, they're not only worried about their health, but, you know, they're worried mm -hmm. about their jobs, they're worrying about finances Future. and health care and uh, uh, insurance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the insurance company is sending you a bill, you know, denied. Mm -hmm. Ah! Right. You know, <laughs> now what do I do? Right. I mean, how do you deal with all of the stress and strain of all of it? That's well, another it's um, really that's another difficult. great thing about the Hope Club is to have that community of people who have already dealt with it. You know, I was new to the Hope Club in November. I was nine months into my treatment, but you can always find somebody that could help you. You know, with, with it's just such a range. It's it's everything. It it can really help you solve any problem. You can find knowledge from you know insurances to everything. So so somebody can direct you to a certain place or uh, you know how to handle certain things. So it's that's another. It's a it's a unique community of people. Helpful. Very exciting. Yes, it is. So tell me about Samantha the therapy dog who I had the very large pleasure of meeting when I interviewed you at the Hope Club. Tell me about Samantha. Well, um, Samantha I got a year ago June and she's a Great Dane lab mix and mm -hmm. she's just a big old Love bug. Love bug. She really, <laughs> truly is. Um, she's, she's fabulous. She's, she? she's got a wonderful temperament. Um, she was really designed for this work. Um, she, she she attends new member meetings because it's not uncommon to have someone walking through the door who's full of anxiety and being very overwhelmed by their experience. And um, if the person wants Sam there, Sam just cuddles right up next to the person, sometimes on the couch, sometimes at their feet. And it's just wonderful when you, you can have that diversion of the dog that's next to you and you're paying you know, all this physical attention to the dog and you're free to share you know, what your experience is. It's, it's a much more comforting way for people to talk about what's going on for them. Well, I know in the library environment they have therapy dogs that sit and the kids read to them because they, mm -hmm. they love doing that. But I can imagine that uh, it must be a soothing thing to have the therapy dog there. Yes. She's, she doesn't bark. No. no and, and <laughs> she, she's very quiet. She just gives you love, and she is a nice distraction. Um, there are days, there are many days where as in treatment or even just somebody diagnosed, you're not smiling, you know, your head yeah. is full of fear and worries and then you see Samantha mm -hmm. and you can't help but to light up and you just want to, you know, hug her and she's just so sweet. I mean, Give if dogs treats. could smile, she's <laughs> definitely smiling. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we did talk about having her sitting with us uh, today you, yeah. and, and I really seriously thought about it and I said, you know, Tracy, I just think we're all going to be like this, yeah. looking at the dog. <laughs> Petting the dog, yeah. That's true. <laughs> and our heads are yes. all going to be turned. That's true. She does so I don't attention. think that's going to work out. <laughs> so, yeah. oh, and the that's kids, too bad. And the kids and the teens oh, absolutely sure. love her. And, you know, she's, she's great for them, too. She's great for anybody. Now, what about caregivers? I mean, mm. I understand they're under a lot of strain themselves. Um, what are some wellness tips for them? Um, well, just for the statement that you made, uh, it's part of the reason why we say that cancer is a family disease, yeah. because it does impact everybody to varying degrees, and you're never quite sure how it's going to impact. Um, you know, significant other kids, um, other family members, brothers, sisters, yeah. parents, absolutely. Um, so it's, it's really important for them to connect with themselves. It's not uncommon to hear from a care partner that they feel left out of the process because um, all of our, our tensions, our, our worries are going to the person with a diagnosis and sometimes mm -hmm. the other people in the, in the family can get lost in that process. 
and um, we can see a variety of emotions result from those feelings. So for them to come to a place like the club and have support groups that are available or activities that are there, yeah. um, even to take part in the cards game, mm -hmm. Um, it's amazing that the therapy that takes right. place as you're playing canasta, the yeah. conversations that are going on, the knitting groups, things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really important for the for the care partner to to tend to their own needs, uh, to make sure that they're going to the docs as they've always gone. Um, that if 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 they have things that they've incorporated in their lives that bring joy to them, that they stay connected to those things because they need to, to source themselves as they're taking care of the other of the person with a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So it's important for everybody to tune into themselves, to stay connected with what is important to them, to not get lost in the disease, right? It, which is so easy to do for everybody. Yeah. I heard a friend of mine use the term a family gets cancer mm -hmm. yeah um, which is absolutely true and I can yep. say especially as a young person um, younger ish <laughs> um, you're young <laughs> <laughs> that uh, it's it's absolutely true you know it, yep. what your siblings deal with what your parents parents deal with what your spouse deals with it's yep. uh, mm -hmm. you know on it's on different levels but very similar to what you as the patient is going through the fears you have, they have also um, for you, and they're often completely helpless. There, mm -hmm. there isn't a whole lot that somebody can do for you, but be there. So it's, it's nice to have, you know, again, like you said, the support groups at the Hope mm -hmm. Club of other family members. You know, yeah. support groups are important. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's part of the clubhouse. I mean, you really develop a very broader support network than you would have ordinarily. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people that want to help out. Yeah. And they're offering all the time. So for the person with a diagnosis as well as the care partners to be willing to accept that help right. when people offer it, anything. And That's hard. That is really hard, and especially if you yourself are used to taking care of yes. others and then now you feel now you know others want to take care of you there's some resistance there but um, to one of the t very helpful tips whether you're the person with the diagnosis or the family member is have a list of things that people can help out with yeah right, you can mow the lawn Absolutely. Yes. you can do the garbage on Thursday night yeah. pick up dry cleaning yeah take mm -hmm. run the kids to, to baseball practice right. you know anything like that just to have that list ready and available um, so that you can you know somebody makes the offer take them up on it right well and when you think of calling someone that's being affected by all of this you're worrying and saying oh what if it's a bad time what if they're sleeping mm -hmm. I don't want to stress them out and make them think that they have to call me back right. and and it's crazy the things that go through your head but you know a, mm -hmm. a close friend of mine was diagnosed or her, uh, with uh, multiple myeloma a month ago mm -hmm. and uh, one of the things that I, I, I just said to her, I said, well, you know, I know this sounds crazy, but if you just send, I know there's a lot of people calling, it's too many phone calls, 45-minute mm -hmm. phone calls, she's exhausted. So just send one update via email mm -hmm. or via the Caring, Caring Bridge, Bridge yep. website, uh, and that's it. You're spending 15 minutes and everyone's up to date. That's right. So talk a little bit more about what that Caring Bridge uh, does. Um, it's, it's a range of things. As I said, it could be blogging for the patient or it could be a family member or anybody. It's, it can be a place where you can get updates. Um, I use it, you know, as therapy for myself, but it can be as simple as, you know, I saw the doctor this week. Um, this is what they said, this is what we're doing next. Um, so. so it can really be any information that you put on there, but it's a great way to reach everybody because... Well, and the, it takes you... Yeah, what, five minutes, minutes, yeah. 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 The, the text, the phone calls, everybody cares, everybody wants to know how you're doing, but it, it gets overwhelming as the patient to have that responsibility. So it, Caring Bridge would be a great way to Good. reach everybody easily. Now, I have the incredibly jam-packed newsletter for the Hope Club. And uh, 
I am amazed at how many events go on all at once. I mean, so let's say March 14th. Exercise your core, Canasta, Adult Blood Cancer Network, Easy Does It Yoga, Phoenix Rising Group, Recurrence or Stage 4 Group, Adult Cooking Class, Ovarian Cancer Network Caring Together, and Hope Club On The Go, Zumba. <laughs> and that's just one day. Right. So you have all kinds of programs, the yeah, exercise programs, yeah. the support groups, um, well, you never it's know really what's amazing. going to speak to people. Right. What, what are the most popular ones that people are attending? Um, actually, our wellness programs are our more popular programs, which is part of the reason why we're going to expand those offerings. Mm -hmm. um, things like yoga mm -hmm. and the adult cooking group, um, uh, the Qigong, the massage things. We had to add another massage therapist. We added another Reiki therapist. You know, those types of things um, have become more popular. I'm really pleased, though, because it says to me that people are they wanting to take care of themselves. Right. And one of the things that you mentioned on that particular day is Hope Club on the Go, and mm -hmm. that we understand that not everyone can come to Latham. Mm -hmm. So we take the clubhouse into the community. And um, I have a wonderful outreach manager, Shavina Richardson, who takes Hope Club and goes to uh, two locations in downtown Albany. Mm -hmm. um, we've been in um, Schenectady County before, and now we're looking at Rensselaer County okay. and the possibility of Montgomery County also. We understand that you know people are busy, so um, mm -hmm. we need to, to look at more convenient ways for people to access our programs and services, which is one of the other things that we're looking into right now and using technology so that we can yeah. do an educational program at the clubhouse and use the internet to, uh, to stream it into someone's home or right. into a, a treatment center that's located in Glens Falls or Plattsburgh or down in Columbia County. So. Well, who is allowed to attend the, the programs? Anybody who's a member. Okay. Anybody who's touched by cancer, who has spent the time to come and visit us and um, help us better understand what their situation is. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to say, too, that it's um, the Hope Club is support groups are great. And I had to try on a few before I found one that fits. But they're, they're also not for everybody. Mm -hmm. So that's what's wonderful about the programs, the cooking class, um, the yoga, mm -hmm. the sewing or knitting. It, it's, it, it goes back to what Tracy said earlier. You don't want to discount anything. And, and I think a lot of patients are looking for what works for them. And it would just be right. unlikely that you wouldn't find something that worked for you there. You don't have to always talk about it. Mm -hmm. or talk about you know the cancer or the patient or, but, but if you need to, you can. So it really is. There's something for everybody. There really is. And in case anyone's wondering where you're located, it's sort of kitty corner from the Latham Medical Park. Right? Yes, Capital Region Health Park. Mm -hmm. Yes, so. right near the intersection of Wade Road and Troy Schenectady Road, off Exit Six of the North Way. So it's Penny Lane. Penny Lane, it is. Yes. And do you want to mention who Penny is? Um, Penny is actually um, was the wife of E. Stewart Jones, who is one of our wonderful supporters. Uh -huh. And he, um, Penny Lane was named for his wife, who passed away from ovarian, ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer. Okay. Yeah. Aha. Now, who can volunteer, and what can they do for you? We love for people to volunteer, <laughs> and. Any talent, um, anything that they want to do, uh, people are more than welcome to come. We have our community lunch, Bon Appetit, that is every Thursday afternoon, and we have volunteers who come in and either cook at the club and you know take part in this community lunch or uh, cook it and bring it. Oh. We've had organizations okay. like Pepsi Bottling Company, Hilton Garden Inn, um, Albany Memorial Hospital, the cafeteria crew who has brought food in. Good. And it's really just a, you know, who doesn't like to break bread, right? Okay. <laughs> right. Great nope. conversations, yeah. good times. Um, and then for others, we have uh, volunteers uh, who uh, facilitate like a quilting group. 
Uh, we used to have a jewelry making uh, group that met once, uh, twice a month, but unfortunately she, uh, our facilitator got busy, so we're looking for a jewelry person who might want to do something like that. Okay. But we're really open to anybody who wants to share their time, okay. their enthusiasm, their interest with the clubhouse, Great. and for anybody who wants to, you know, doors are always open. Now, uh, do you have any regular fundraisers that happen throughout the year? We do, um, and actually this is a, a pretty busy time of year for us. We have um, the Pickett Family Golf Outing that is at the end of June, and we have, for runners, we have the Shack Attack that is on June 3rd. We have our gala, the Night in Tuscany, that is in, toward the end of July. But if you get on our website, um, cancer.org backslash Hope Club, um, all mm -hmm. of our, our calendar of events as well as our uh, fundraising activities are listed on there. And you also accept donations if anybody wants to donate. Yes. Okay, so uh, we'll just go over the contact information. We'll just do that phone number and web address one more time. Um, our telephone number for anybody who is in need is 782-9833. Okay. And our web address is www.cancer.org backslash Hope Club. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for coming in and thank sharing. You. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you next time on Focus on Health.